Morgan Stanley's new crop of entrepreneurs kicking off their program in the firm's multicultural innovation lab today. The Accelerator supports female and diverse founders. Joining us right now with more on the startup and investing ecosystems. Carla Harris is here. She's the senior client advisor at Morgan Stanley. Carla, it's great to see you, and it's great to see you doing this work. I, I know you've been now doing it uh, for how many years are we on? Uh, we are on the fifth year in total. Yep. And the and the seventh cohort. Seventh cohort. So yeah. what's different now? Well, I'll tell you, Andrew, this has been uh, an amazing time. We have probably doubled the number of companies that are applying to the lab. So we're well into the thousands now. And the we get an opportunity to see earlier what the trends are going to be in the larger economy. So we saw a lot of companies that were focusing on AI, on augmented reality, people continuing to figure out how to enhance distance learning, how to manage diversity using technology. So those are some of the big trends when I think about all the companies that actually applied this year and some of those that actually got into the lab. Okay, so what's, what's the hot idea this year then? I mean, of, of the companies that are now in the lab. Yeah, I'd say the hot idea are three, actually. Augmented reality, really using that to, to look at new opportunities, look at new spaces, look at new products. Diversity, as I said, how do you use technology really to take, out of the, take the bias out of the recruiting process to actually make the process a lot more equitable? And then also, as I said, ed tech. You know, how can you make sure that the phone is now used as a vehicle, as a tool for kids to learn, especially around STEM? So I'd say those are the, the hot trends I would tell you to look at. At. The other thing, Andrew, okay, I would so say, what, but tell, hold on, but go back, go back to the first one. How are you doing on the, on the? I mean, we can talk about augmented reality. A lot of people are doing that, but you mm -hmm. said you were using technology in terms of uh, diversity and recruiting yeah. and trying to take bias out of it. How are you doing that? What does yeah, that look so like? There's a company in the lab called MyTier, and basically they allow employers to, to use their product and to take the bias out, to actually make the resumes blind, and to also provide training to those who are actually going to be reviewing resumes so they can get some of the bias out of the way they look at the paper or the way they look at the information, and also to coach candidates through the process. So they are thinking about both ends of the ecosystem, from the candidates also to the employers. And we've seen a number of companies over the last, I'd say, three cohorts, and Andrew, that have trying to be figuring out have tried to figure out a way to take this bias out of the recruiting process. People are very focused on equity, entering companies right. and while. But companies. what, are, Carla? What are they doing specifically, though? I mean, are they removing the names from from the resumes? What What is the when the That's part speak of to the specifics of how it works? That's part of it. They're taking the names out. They might be taking specifics out around schools. They're focusing on what you've been trained. Have you been trained on economics? Have you been trained on engineering? Have you been trained on computer science? And really trying to look at the facts of the resume as opposed to those things, whether it's the schools or the name or where the candidate is from that might create bias on behalf of the reader. But don't I want, don't I want to know where they went to school? You may want to know, but you have to think about it, Andrew. There are people who may not know about certain colleges and, and universities and therefore may have a bias right. against them simply because of their own ignorance. They don't know the school.